Hey everyone, I'm John, aka Skyward FPV. Um, today I'll be reviewing the Quadra Stereo QR200. It's a 200 millimeter size frame uh, that has a very unique enclosed center section. Um, it can run 1806, 2204, and even 2206 size motors, um, and four to five inch props. But what I'm most excited about is that it actually has an integrated HD camera mount for your GoPro or Mobius camera. I'm always trying to figure out solutions for how to carry one of those cameras. So let's take a look. All right, so let's see here. One of the first things I noticed is that it actually includes a sheet of instructions. I don't know why more quads don't include a simple page with tips on how to build their product. Um, but this is very nice. All right, so let's see what we have here. We have a battery strap with an X260. These are the vertical sections. We have the main frame itself, which is nice and actually has a some bumpers here for motor protection we have what looks like the hd camera mount the fpv camera mount another portion of the hd camera mount i'm assuming and a a nice sticker so I received an email from Ron, the owner of Quadrasteria, that he sent to all the recent owners of the QR200 about an anomaly with some complex aerodynamics that happens to some quads that have the vertical plates mounted right next to the front propellers. So after the testing, it revealed that there can be an unexpected roll outwards during hard yaw turns that happens occasionally. So he sent a PDF document detailing how to fix this problem. Um, it actually entails wiring the motors to spin in reverse of their normal rotation and some clean flight CLI commands to reprogram the flight controller. So this will be really interesting. Uh, but most importantly, I'll have to remember for this quad that the props actually have to be mounted in reverse. So let's get to building it.
red highlights. So I'm done with the build and I think it came out looking very, very cool. So um, let's take a closer look. So I did the red highlights with a oil-based Sharpie marker. And if you watch the build portion, you'd notice that I actually went over the edges with white first and then red to make it pop. I did a test on a piece and I noticed that uh, without the white beneath it as a uh, base layer, it really looked uh, a little bit more dull and dark and the white underneath it really makes the red pop. Um, it really looks nice with the red hardware um, that the QR200 comes with. And, uh, um, you know, red props, obviously. I switched out the uh, standard strap just because the standard strap that comes with the QR200 is blue, and I thought black looked a lot better. And obviously a Fat Shark uh, antenna looks nice because you got the red and black color combination. So I can't really recommend the Naze 32 Rev 6 that I used right now. It seems pretty buggy and it has a bunch of issues. Um, I had heard that during the development they attached the 5 volt rail to the USB so that it would power up the RX while you're doing testing, which is nice in theory, but it's bad because when you go to the motor tab, it actually can send enough voltage uh, through everything to spin the motors when the battery's not plugged in and at times it'll actually make the software crash. So I'm not sure if I really like my antenna configuration here. Uh, when you're running five inch props, the propellers get a little close to the wire for my liking. I don't think it's going to get in the path of the propeller, but just to be safe, uh, I can 3D print a antenna mount, which you can actually get off the Quadrasteria website under the QR200 uh, product link and um, it would mount right here and it would keep it clear from any propellers. And at first I was a bit nervous of this XT60 connection. It soldered just directly to the PDB, directly underneath this board. Um, and I was thinking that in a hard crash it could break loose or fatigue with the battery right behind it. Um, but once I got it installed, it seems very, very rigid. So only uh, time will tell if uh, um, if it breaks under some hard crashes. So it's not the easiest quad to work on the internals once you have it built. And I could see this being problematic if you had a issue on the field and wanted to troubleshoot a problem. Um, all the components are a bit hard to get to unless you remove one of these plates, which takes about five screws to remove. All in all, I think it's a very creative design and I'm really excited to see how it flies. So let's take it out for its first test flight.
exemplifies nicely. All the components that Ron from Quadrasteria sent me to review really complement the quad well. Let's take a closer look. So it's a very unique looking quad and is engineered very creatively. I like how the uh, FPV camera and most of the internal components are protected. The HD camera mount is just awesome. Um, other than being able to run a GoPro and a Mobius, it actually fits the session perfectly. And with the camera mount set back, it doesn't throw off the center of gravity as much as it does um, having it so far forward, like on some of my other quads. So keep in mind that there are actually motor height limitations if you're planning on using different motors on your quad and if you're running five inch props. Um, the props won't be able to pass inside this front section if they're too high. Um, it's actually a bit unnerving how close my five inch props pass by the, uh, uh, the camera mount inside my frame. It's probably only about a millimeter of clearance. Unfortunately, I had a problem with how uh, the X-T60 is mounted to the PDB. Earlier I had said I was surprised how rigid it was, but on my first test flight, I went over a couple trees and as I was coming back down, I was caught by a limb that I didn't see. It spun me around and I had my first crash and I had lost all power. So I was done for that day. I took it home and I opened it up and I found that the solder joint on the X-T60 and the PDB broke from force of the battery pushing on it. So I resoldered it I replaced the stock 12 millimeter risers that are included with the kit with 10 millimeter risers to lower the connector. And then I hot glued it all in place. Lastly, I added this 3D printed antenna mount with a dab of hot glue underneath to add as much rigidity to the connector as I could. So far, it's actually worked pretty nicely and it's withstood quite a few crashes. I shared this with Ron and he recommends actually wiring up a standard pigtail XT60 wire at the back for those who are planning on making the most resilient quad right now. Also, don't mount the antennas like I did earlier. Uh, in, in that crash I had mentioned, one got caught in a prop and it actually cut it close to the receiver. So I got a new antenna and I rerouted my antennas to the X-T60 here on this 3D printed mount. And um, I think it protects it a lot better. So I had a revelation when test flying this quad with my buddy Chase. Um, I had thought to myself when I was building it, since it can handle five inch props, why would I ever really put four inch props on it? but I'm really glad I tried them out. Um, this quad fly is so locked in and it goes exactly where you want it with four inch props. With five inch props, you do have more thrust, but you also get some kind of strange flight characteristics. Um, even with the reverse motor rotation and using Ron's custom motor mix, it just doesn't quite feel as stable, especially when you yaw aggressively. Uh, when you do yaw aggressively, the rear end feels a little bit light and it just dips in a little bit more than you expect. It's not a detrimental issue and I could actually probably get used to it. Um, you could always just roll out a little bit to compensate. Um, it's not strong enough to make you want to crash. Um, I just find it kind of interesting. I haven't flown it without the reverse motors or the custom motor mix, so I don't know if it's drastically different without that fix. Um, but I'm just really impressed with this quad and four inch props. I'm so glad I tried them out. It's like a little dart. And um, if I were to race this quad, I'd actually race it with the 4-inch props on 4S with an XT60 uh, pigtail at the back. I think it would be a real contender. So I want to thank my buddy Chase, who helped me out getting the test flight footage. Um, you can check out some of his flight videos on his channel, and I'll put the link in the description below. Also, I really want to thank you for watching. If you like this video, please thumbs up and subscribe to show your support. It really helps me out. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video. Successful landing. <laughs> ah, super close to deer crap. That was really close. I almost totally crashed in that.